Human karyotypes allow us to look at chromosome patterns that might be responsible for disease. The first step in a karyotype is to take a picture of the chromosomes of a cell while they are condensed or coiled up during cell division. The images of the chromosomes are then laid out from largest to smallest with the sex chromosomes, the ones that determine whether you're male or female, at the end. Homologous chromosomes, the matching ones from each parent that control the same kind of information, are matched up with each other based on their size and their banding pattern. So this one would come up here as number one because it's the largest. I compared this one up with the other really tiny one. And I just look at size, shape, and banding pattern to keep pairing up my chromosomes. This used to all be done by hand, which was a really tedious process. Now, fortunately, computers can recognize and match the chromosomes up for us. To complete your assignment, you're going to go to a website that's done part of the chromosome matching for you, but it will let you get some practice in matching up chromosomes. It'll show you a chromosome and then ask you to click on the appropriate spot for its homologous partner. And it only has a few choices for you. You can just click on the blue ones. For this one, I would click right here because that's the one that is the best match for it. It will let you go through and match up all the chromosomes. And once you've got them matched up, you're going to need to come up with a notation and a diagnosis. Once you've matched up all your chromosomes, they're going to take you to a site that has a lot of information and make sure you scroll all the way up and down that page so that you get all of the information that you need. It's going to show you your completed karyotype at the bottom. It's going to show you how to make a diagnosis. And for your assignment, I'm going to ask you to give me the notation to describe your karyotype. Proper notation tells me the number of chromosomes in my karyotype total the types of sex chromosomes that are present, and the number of any extra or missing chromosome from the karyotype. So for this karyotype, I have 22 pairs, 44 chromosomes there, plus a pair of X chromosomes. So my notation for this karyotype would be 46 total chromosomes, and then since both my sex chromosomes look the same, they're X's, so it would be 46 XX. I would then scroll on that page, look for a diagnosis, and this is a normal number of chromosomes. So my diagnosis would be that there is no chromosome abnormality. This karyotype shows pairs, but it also shows there is an extra chromosome, number 16. So my total number of chromosomes is going to be 47. My sex chromosomes are a big X and a little bitty thing, which they've labeled Y here for you, but even if it's not labeled, you know that it's a Y because it's so much smaller than the other one. And my extra chromosome, is at number 16. So my notation for this karyotype would be 47XY plus 16. This karyotype is missing a chromosome at number 14. So our notation would be 45, because one is missing. My sex chromosomes are the same, XX. And then I would write minus 14 to let you know which one is missing. This karyotype comes from a person who's missing one of the sex chromosomes. We would write her karyotype as 45, because she's missing a chromosome, and X. And we don't need to write anything else in the notation, because if we just write X, it's obvious which of the chromosomes is missing. They're should be either another X or a Y chromosome. Karyotypes can also be used to show chromosome abnormalities. 
this person had crossing over with a mistake and they ended up with extra information being put on chromosome 14. A karyotype though is not going to show us if there's a mutation in one particular gene on a chromosome. It's just large problems with the chromosomes that show up.